Hey everybody, today is Friday the 31st of January 2013 and now that January is in the books, let's take a look at the uh, markets. We're down 3.5% for the S&P 500, 3% of which came this week. Uh, NASDAQ down 2%, uh, most of the losses again this week and um, Russell 2000 uh, for the year down 2 and 3 quarters percent and uh, pretty much all the equities markets are down year to date. Uh, Dow's down 5.5% whereas uh, gold, the dollar, and bonds are all up. So let's take a look at the uh, markets. We had a lot thrown at them this week with the Federal Reserve meeting, uh, some overseas uh, frustrations, I guess we would say, and uh, a lot of earnings reports as well. So uh, during earnings season, of course, we want to focus on the action in the individual names and uh, be aware of when those earnings reports are due out because otherwise it can uh, be a disaster. Right? You're really just kind of gambling there um, and you need to at least hedge if you're going to have a position, I believe, as a trader in front of earnings. So the S&P 500, uh, we obviously lost the 50-day moving average last week. That 50-day moving average now has a slight downward slope to it. And that the inability of this market to bounce so far is a little bit disturbing. Now, we came back quite a bit today uh, during the course of the day, uh, only to fade uh, at the uh, close here in the last hour. Um, but let's go back here for a moment. We'll take a look at the daily chart where we can see that this has been a important level uh, that was prior resistance back in October and November and this turned into a little band of support here um, back in December and then just in here recently still so we're at an important level and if we look at the moving averages you can see we do have a significant moving average here which is the 100 day or 20 week moving average so if we look at the weekly chart you'll see that blue uh, 20 week moving average is in the same place as that blue 100 day moving average that's why I color code them to keep them the same on uh, different time frames. Anyways, let's uh, take a look at the intraday action and we'll get a look first at a 130 uh, minute uh, chart. And what I want to do here is actually add more days than that. We'll go, uh, we'll do 200. I don't think it's going to show that many. But what I what I want to frame here is basically uh, since the September uh, low, we've seen that uh, this is something that we were talking about last week is this Fibonacci retracement that we came down to a 38.2 percent retracement this week. That 38.2% retracement also came into this prior band of resistance and also came into the 100 day moving average. So the market is trying to stabilize here. There's no signs really of any good stability yet. And in order for this market to be controlled by the buyers, once again, we're going to need to see it get back above uh, the high that it saw on Thursday uh, at about 179.80. You can still see that the five day moving average has a declining slope to it. And even though we were above it uh, uh, for a while on Thursday, we don't trust these markets when we, when they have a declining volume, uh, five day moving average. So we, uh, we look at this market going into next week as we've definitely got a key level of support to focus on. That's the lows of this week right around 177. And looking down to a 10 minute time frame, we can just kind of hone in on that a little bit better and see that this is now really what we're looking at is we're starting to try Try to stabilize in here. That five-day moving average will begin to flatten out on Monday. So the best case scenario is that uh, we can uh, kind of come up to this level and maybe pull back a little bit, find some support at a rising five-day moving average, and then break some resistance. If that's to happen, that we're going to Bre uh, break back above this uh, 179.75 to 180 level, then it looks like this market would be in a position to go back up and test uh, this prior error important level here at about 181 and a half ish, which we had resistance turning into support. And that support that was broken, obviously, is what led to the, this uh, sell off here. So the market has a lot to prove, in other words. We're at a place where it looks like su support should be found, but the truth is uh, we still have pressure in this market and a lot of anxiety. Um, so until the market can really uh, flat, you know, this five-day moving average can flatten out and we can make a pattern of higher highs and higher lows uh, above it again, then we want to really be very cautious uh, going into next week because if this turns out to be just a pause within a bigger downtrend that's developing, then we have to look at uh, what are our next areas of potential support. And we have down here uh, this prior uh, area 
area near about 175. And if we can take that Fibonacci off of that same level here on the daily chart, you can see that comes in right at about a 50% retracement of that October low right there. So the S&P 500, we're really very, you have to look at it very cautiously next week. We had uh, a lot of volatility in there today, obviously. Uh, the market gapped down and, uh, you know, strong rally. But again, that rally uh, uh, faded here into the close today um, and closed slightly below the volume weighted average price. The market's got a lot to prove here right now. So it's basically very uh, cautious until we have uh, a better handle of uh, whether this is just a pullback, an yet another pullback, or if this is going to be the beginning of a deeper correction. Nobody knows for sure, uh, but we have key levels to monitor. And uh, the NASDAQ, which didn't perform as poorly, of course, as the S&P 500, you can see it was only down 1.9% uh, uh, for the year uh, versus 3.5% for the uh, S&P 500. That's for the month for the year to date. Um, we do have an important uh, area of support in here that needs to hold between 84 and a half and, and 84.75, I would say, is really the key level to hold in there. So if we now kind of take a look at the same uh, September uh, low that we in uh, the NASDAQ and see where we are relatively, you can see that the NASDAQ is holding up much better. We obviously saw it there with the percentage numbers, but we didn't get down to that 38.2% retracement, which would come in at about 84 and a quarter. So I think that uh, uh, next week, this 84 and a quarter uh, looks like an important level. We've we've kind of got this band of support in here that this this area of support in this week's lows down towards about 84 seem as though they they ought to hold support. If it doesn't, then we have to look at the bigger picture and say perhaps the 100-day moving average will be in play here for the Nasdaq, which is down at 83.30. If that's the case, well then that's three points away, and we've still got a a, a good uh, amount of uh, uh, negativity to sidestep or if you're more aggressive to day trade on the short side. The Russell 2000 uh, lost ground of course this week as well. You can see here on the daily time frame it's holding above that 100 day moving average and we can go back to uh, the lows of last December and uh, kind of draw on that trend line or we can take one off of April's lows and kind of say this represents the essence of trend. Perhaps that 100 day moving average is where this market needs to find its support uh, which is down uh, well it's uh, just under that, or I'm sorry, just above 110. So it's about 110 and a half. So when we look at an intraday time frame, we're looking at a 130 minute time frame here as well. And I use 130 minutes because we have. Uh, uh, three periods each day, uh, that is three candles of equal length that are 130 minutes uh, because the market is open 389 minutes a day. And that way we have uh, equal increments of time that we're comparing to. Um, so when we look at the essence of trend here, we broke an important trend line this week and we didn't really lose much ground from there. But this was the bigger story is that we lost this important area of support at 113.65 to about 114. This prior band of support now looks like resistance that until we can get back above and hold above 114, we have to look at this eye, this market is very suspiciously that it's going to need, need to correct further through time going sideways or we're going to see further price erosion, perhaps down towards uh, even 109-ish. Um, but the, the fact is we have to be playing a very strong defense in this market. The market has been very forgiving over the last several years, uh, and a lot of people have become complacent and I think developed a lot of poor trading habits, expecting stocks to come back quickly. I always say defense is job number one and that we have to uh, manage risk uh, very uh, aggressively. and, and now now, uh, hopefully, is, is the time when you're recognizing that or if you're not recognizing it and you're experiencing larger losses uh, and, and are kind of, you know, frozen, paralyzed, waiting for them to come back, uh, make a promise to yourself to, to not let that happen, it, to, to go ahead and be more proactive and look at this market, again, with an eye of suspicion, as long as we're below about that 114 level. On the 10-minute time frame, you can see here that uh, this is, again, here's our, our, our little band of resistance uh, that'll be important next week. So maybe up to, maybe uh, that band of resistance is more about 113.50 to 113.50. Uh, 
90. Um, and of course, the lows this week, we want to see hold. If they fail to hold, then I, then it, it paves the way for another leg lower. And that's you know the case for all of these markets. We've been looking at these semiconductors, and they've been in a choppy uptrend, uh, but they've been in an uptrend. And this week, we, we lost an important level of support at 41.50. We also are stuck below that 50-day moving average. So it seems as though the semiconductors um, are, you know, they're obviously pulling back here. And, you know, if we continue to pull back down towards this trend line from uh, uh, the lows of, two, I'm sorry, December of 2012, then we've got maybe $40 uh, in, our, in our sites here. And it's not too far away to think uh, that it could happen. It's certainly not unreasonable. We want to see this market back above this band of resistance, though, uh, the prior band of support between 4150 and 4165 before we can trust it. So we want to see that five-day moving average flatten out. Prices get above and hold above this 4150 to 4165. If it can do that, then I think we can see a squeeze higher. But the odds become less likely the longer time it takes uh, for that to develop. So be aware of that. The financials are down to an important level here as well. This prior band of support in here, 21 to 2110, uh, is you know this prior resistance rather has also been an important level of support. And you can see we're just kind of dancing on that level right now. So so when we look at the uh, 130 minute chart here and we take a look again at that uh, September low, we can uh, go in here and kind of throw this uh, Fibonacci on there. We, we came down close to a 50% retracement this week. And, um, you know, it was uh, kind of interesting to see that, uh, for instance, um, a, a stock like Bank of America is holding up really well here, whereas uh, Citibank had had, had such a, a horrible couple weeks here. So take each stock on a stock by stock basis. Manage your risk accordingly. If you're not stopped out of Citigroup and you're holding Bank of America, then you've got to look at Bank of America and say, well, you know, what's my what's my loss point in here? We're seeing some carnage in these financials. I don't want to get Citibanked. Uh, in a Bank of America position, because that just sucks to you know look at and, and see that you know Citibank is down to the uh, levels uh, that have been important uh, you know most of last year. And uh, anyways, back to the financial index itself. The prime you know the longer term trend we're still holding above a 40 week or 200 day moving average, but we're seeing volatility here, and that uh, 150 day moving average may be next for this market, and uh, perhaps even down to the 200 day moving average where we had this prior support. The fact is nobody knows what's coming up next, but if we're not back above 2140 to 2150 uh, next week, then uh, I think the financials, uh, you know, if we break back below again this 2090 to 21, this is our band of support, this is our band of resistance. If we can break above it and hold, then I think we'll continue up towards about 2185 to 2190. If we break below this support level, however, um, and, and right now the momentum is turning lower, we still have that declining five-day moving average, then perhaps we're headed for uh, a deeper pullback down towards 20 and a half, or even, again, even down towards that 200-day uh, moving average at, uh, uh, well, I guess that's about 20 and a half as well. So, um, you know, there's still a lot of danger left in this market. We saw earnings report hit uh, this week and, and a lot of companies were treated very differently. Apple, uh, we were waiting for, and as I said last week, I didn't want to take a position in front of earnings. To me, it was more akin to gambling and uh, hopefully uh, you didn't uh, get burned by this. Obviously, a lot of people did, uh, but the stock gap lower and you know these gap lowers aren't a reason to buy. We saw you know this gap down four days ago and yesterday I pointed out to subscribers right here that, that it was the uh, volume weighted average price since the event that acted as resistance intraday and that provided for a nice short opportunity. So, the, you know, Apple closed with a, a big loss this week. It's still uh, looking vulnerable to me. You've got this prior support in here that now uh, seems as though it should encounter uh, act as a level of resistance. And perhaps we're heading down towards a 200-day moving average in Apple at about 485. It's certainly pot within the realm of possibility. Um, you know, the buyers have, have lost control here, so don't try to fight it. 
it. Um, it doesn't matter if Carl Icahn is buying because obviously his buying hasn't had any positive f effect on the stock. He announced that he had bought another million shares, I believe, on uh, on Tuesday, and you know the volume weighted average price uh, at the end of the day on Tuesday was at 508. So I have to believe uh, that you know that that's down about eight dollars a share or so. And I'm not criticizing his position or his trading prowess. Obviously, I'm just trying to point out that even you know the biggest smartest money is wrong a lot of times as well. Some of the other names I thought uh, we we would look at the uh, based on earnings this week were Apple or I'm sorry Amazon. This was particularly brutal. Is that uh, Thursday a lot of people chased the stock into the close thinking that they would have good numbers and bet on those earnings reports and they obviously got hit hard as it gapped lower and closed near the low of the day. These big gaps don't tend to reverse very quickly so be aware of that. Boeing lost a lot of ground too. It gapped lower and continued lower here. So the point is you know, when they get that big gap you're going to see continuation uh, typically in the direction direction of the primary trend. Whereas Google, uh, you know, refreshed prior to earnings, it, it had a little shakeout down to the 50-day moving average, reported earnings, and nice response with that one today. We also saw a nice response with uh, CMG, which had been uh, hurting in here. And, you know, again, if, you know, people probably thought, well, this is short, so I'll, I'll short it. Where it. But, you know, it's really difficult to uh, determine, number one, what the earnings will be, obviously, and secondly, what will the reaction to the earnings be. Um, for CMG, we were up on huge volume here today, and the stock is up at all-time highs. It's had, you know, just a, a, another monster rally here uh, in in, uh, in in shares of this fast food company. A um, couple other ones, was it NetSuite? Uh, you know, th these guys... Talk about volatility. I mean, this one gapped up yesterday and closed higher. It gapped up today and gave it all back. Um, one I thought was interesting is Twitter. That We had mentioned it last week because of the uh, volume-weighted average price year-to-date. And we had mentioned it over here that uh, you know it was back above the volume-weighted average price year-to-date. had a huge rally. I had mentioned over in here, look for potential support for a couple of reasons. The, the volume-weighted average price and uh, because of that... Uh, uh, retracement of the it was a 50% retracement of the uh, entire range the stock has traded in and then again this week on uh, Monday we saw the stock come down and test that volume weighted average price year to date so it it appears as though in Twitter that the volume weighted average price year to date or I'm sorry uh, since it's been public is is definitely an area where buyers are coming back into this stock and that's something to be aware of it's not always going to be the true with all stocks but this has been a good one so far uh, um, Under Armour was another name that reported earnings in, in great response in there as well. So uh, next week we have another uh, um, strong uh uh, uh, calendar of, of earnings. That is, there's a lot of earnings reports due, rather. Um, and then we're, there were pretty much kind of the little trickle out uh, from, from after that. But we'll be beyond the uh, first quarter earnings next week. And our focus and worry will go to uh, other things such as taper and Turkish currencies or whatever headlines you want to read. Uh, headlines can be extremely distracting. Uh, as I always say, only price pays. And that's what we focus on each and every day in Alpha Trends. If you haven't given it a try, please uh, do so. If you're listening to this, um, please uh, take a, a moment, if you find it educational, to vote for Alpha Trends. Today's the last day. Even if you voted before, you're allowed to vote again uh, for the Trader Planet survey under the uh, education. And I've got a link to that on Alpha Trends. So enjoy your weekend. Go Broncos. Uh, I'll talk to you next week. Thanks.